proteins and their structure. In this module, you will learn about proteins and their structure. It is often said that we should include protein-rich food in our diet. Proteins are present in many food items such as eggs, fish and milk. Proteins are not just present in foods, they are also an integral part of our body. They are present in our hair, muscles and even in hemoglobin. Proteins are formed when a large number of amino acids bond together through peptide bond. Depending upon the molecular shape of proteins, they can be classified as fibrous proteins and globular proteins. Let us study about them one by one. Fibrous proteins are formed when polypeptide chains run parallel to each other and are linked together to form fibers. The molecules of these chains at many points are held together by hydrogen and disulfide bonds. These proteins are insoluble in water. Some common examples of fibrous proteins are collagen and keratin. On the other hand, globular proteins are formed due to the folding around of polypeptide chains. This gives a spherical shape to the globular proteins. These proteins are soluble in water. Some examples of globular proteins are insulin and albumin. As you can see, the structure of proteins is quite complex. Let us study about this complex structure of proteins in detail. We can study the structure of proteins in four different levels that is primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary structure of proteins. As we already know, a protein is made of a large number of amino acids. Although there are only 20 amino acids, but these amino acids link together in different sequences giving rise to different polypeptide chains. The sequence of amino acids in a polypeptide chain of a protein is called its primary structure. If the sequence of these amino acids is changed, a new protein gets formed. Now, secondary structure of proteins refers to the manner or shape in which the polypeptide chains are arranged. The different arrangement of polypeptide chains exist due to the hydrogen bonding between the oxygen of carbonyl of one amino acid to the hydrogen of the amide group of another amino acid. The secondary structure shown right now is called alpha helix structure. As you can see in this structure, the hydrogen bonding is intermolecular that occurs between the amino acids of adjacent terms. This results in the twisting up of the structure into a right-handed spiral structure. Another type of secondary structure is formed when the polypeptide chains are stretched to the maximum extension and are then so folded that different strands lie alongside each other. This type of structure is called beta pleated structure. The different strands are held together by intermolecular hydrogen bonding between the amino acids of two different strands. This structure looks similar to the pleated folds of drapery. Therefore, it is known as beta pleated sheet structure. So, alpha helix structure and beta pleated sheet structure represents two different types of secondary structures of proteins. The further folding of the secondary structure of proteins gives rise to the tertiary structure of proteins. Therefore, the tertiary structure represents the overall folding and coiling of the peptide chains. It is the tertiary structure of a protein that gives a geometric shape to the protein that can be of fibrous or globular shape. Although many proteins consist of a single polypeptide chain, there are some proteins which consist of two or more polypeptide chains. These polypeptide chains are referred to as the subunits. The quaternary structure is the special arrangement of these subunits with respect to each other in the protein structure. These subunits in a quaternary structure may be similar or different. 
So we have seen that proteins are specific in their structure. Other than this, proteins are specific in their biological activity too. The natural state in which a protein occurs is its native state and a protein in its native state is called a native protein. A native protein is highly stable. However, if a native protein is subjected to physical or chemical changes such as temperature change or change in pH, the hydrogen bond gets disturbed causing the shape of the protein to change. The protein unfolds and loses its biological activity. This is called denaturation of proteins. Interestingly, the primary structure of a protein remains unaltered even during denaturation. It means that the sequence of amino acids remains unchanged. When we cook an egg, the egg white gets coagulated. This is because of the denaturation of proteins present in the egg white. Let's recap. Proteins are formed when a large number of amino acids bond together through peptide bonds. Depending upon the molecular shape of proteins, they can be classified as fibrous proteins and globular proteins. The structure of proteins can be studied in four different levels that are primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary structure of proteins. If a native protein is subjected to physical or chemical changes, it unfolds and loses its biological activity. This is called the denaturation of protein.